This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So good morning, guys. So yesterday we have seen a uh, few properties of or you know few configurations of Azure words, right? And a uh, few perspectives of your Scrum, like up to product backlog, we have come. And then uh, we also seen how to onboard the requirements and then establish uh, parent child relationships. And then now you know what is a big feature, product backlog item, task, etc., and how to associate with them. And uh, how, how do you use uh, area paths uh, to, uh, to, I mean, basically to control what requirements to be displayed in each and every team's dashboard. And also you see now how to create teams and uh, how to manage the teams in Azure Boards. Now let's get into the next phase of uh, your requirements management that is uh, uh, sprint planning basically. Okay, first let me log into my uh, Azure DevOps, dev.azure.com. So my organization is your planner, okay? And uh, this is our project, online reservation system, okay? Then let's go to uh, boards. So we are in middleware team. Let's, there is nothing in the middleware team dashboard or Kanban board. Let's use a word called Kanban board, okay? DB dev, there is one. And then uh, uh, UI dev. Uh, there are nothing and then online reservation system this is the default team so everything is uh, in the default uh, team that is created when we created the project okay now what i want to do i mean to uh, before we proceed into the uh, next level of configurations i just quickly want to onboard uh, uh, other requirements as well quickly okay the way we onboarded uh, uh, yesterday once okay I think uh, till what we onboarded, sorry. Uh, book for flights, search for flights. Till that point we onboarded that. Right? Let me do a alt tab, okay. Let me onboard quickly, okay. Uh, I'm not explaining anything because you already know how to do it. What I do is in, uh, what is the parent here? Hotel management. Let me open hotel management feature. And from here, I will add the you know, uh, product backlog item. Okay. This is uh, not a feature, this is a product backlog item. Let me add the title. Search for hotels. That's it. Okay. And then uh, I will give the area path as you know, uh, let us say uh, middleware so that it will display uh, in the Kanban board of uh, middleware team because uh, middleware area path is assigned to middleware team okay and i'll give some 120 hours effort okay that's it save and close <coughs> and what is the next one uh, book hotels and this is also under hotel management so hotel management feature let's add another one or the backlog item book photos okay and uh, put it under the uh, middleware area path and then put another uh, 80 or 90 hours save and close and then search for trains it comes under a train management uh, uh, feature basically okay so let's go back to work items and then uh, try and management then add a child which is a product backlog item click on new item you can see the work item type product backlog item okay and uh, since your feature uh, is under area path db dev it is inheriting those properties basically okay by default let it be under db dev and then let me say 24 hours okay then say enter let me quickly do this uh, 
book trans it is also under trans management new item trans it is under uh, db dev okay let me give another uh, uh, 40 hours just i'm randomly giving it okay that's it okay and now let's go back to work items the next one that i have is the tasks let me quickly add these tasks as well okay this is under search for flights uh, uh, product backlog item pvi okay so search for flights so what is that yeah search for flights this is the one search for flights so pvi okay let me go and add a link new item and then this save is that hotel. link oh this is the hotel okay it's a flight right okay yeah then let me add a quickly uh, we need more data so that you know you will better understand the differences that's the reason i'm adding it okay Task. Flights. Okay. So usually, how do we identify on uh, what should be the work item? Like which one should be epic, which one should be feature? Uh, I know uh, that, uh, that's, that's the context, right? I mean, uh, there is no fixed criteria for this one. It's all about how you uh, break down your work item. Okay, break down means it depends on the complexity. Uh, forget about okay. this one. What I'm not talking. I will give one more example. Okay, forget about okay. this one. Okay, yeah, now let us say uh, you take Amazon application, right? Amazon app. Okay, yeah. uh, there you will have a. Uh, uh, there also you will search for products and you will order and you will have notifications and you will have your user profile. Okay. Okay. If uh, if I take a order uh, order management as a, I mean a, in Amazon app you have many epics basically. Because if you take a order, ordering itself, it is a big functionality, right? Under ordering, you should be able to search for products and there will be a number of categories. Okay, for that, you need APIs, for that, you need a database. And under that ordering, there are many types as well. You will have payment gateways. Again, you, you will have, a, you know, what is a, a credit card, debit card, or net banking. And again, you need to give the shipping details okay and uh, you should be able to give multiple shipping addresses as well okay for dispatching the product okay it, when you are having this much complexity your ordering itself will become a epic okay, okay. then what you say uh, ordering is your epic under that you have many features feature one is a payment gateway right payment payment uh, feature under payment feature you will have many product backlog items that means uh, your payment under payment feature one product backlog item is a uh, credit card mechanism. Another product backlog is a uh, debit card mechanism. Another yeah. backlog okay. is net banking. And uh, but uh, you cannot simply say credit. I mean, when you go and tell the developer, hey, credit card is my uh, product backlog item, go and implement. He doesn't know right what to do because developers are just technical guys. Somebody has to go and tell him what to do basically. Because mm -hmm. the requirements have to be uh, further uh, uh, need to be further broken down. Who will do that? Your you know your business analyst, right? In general. So now your credit, your business analyst or Scrum master, whoever it is, right? Or functional program manager, whoever it is, based on your team composition, uh, he will say, hey, this is a credit uh, uh, credit card product backlog item. For this, uh, probably your architect and other people will combine sit and do it basically. They will say, hey, for this, you need a UI development where uh, people need to capture credit card details, all that stuff. And you need a, a API to connect with the bank. And you need a database uh, table so to, uh, to capture all these details. What are these? These are the leaf level uh, uh, items. You call it as a task. When it is a task level, your developer will be able to go and work on it. If you go and tell the developer, you need to capture these credit card details. He knows what to uh, design in the UI. If you tell him go and create a database tables to capture this, he will go and create it. So that is the task actually. Okay, this is how people break down uh, into different different levels. Okay. 
thank you okay so it's a context uh, there is no fixed criteria uh, uh, here. okay yeah i got it yeah let me do it okay and then uh, another task is uh, db development for such for flags uh, here itself uh, i will add okay i'm not giving any work uh, remaining work etc basically okay you can see this i'm not filling any activity or i'm not filling any uh, block etc i'm only just doing uh, entering uh, data it's a your product backlog basically and this is under everything is under search for okay search for flash last one okay okay the next one is uh, under uh, portals basically same ui db api that's how i simply designed it actually hotels search for uh, hotels add a task here by going to related work under middleware okay let me do another one it takes another couple of minutes db development basically you don't do this uh, all these things uh, in your uh, regular work because uh, it's not your work okay but uh, since we are learning i'm just uh, doing it for you okay but of course uh, there is no guarantee that you don't do it because uh, if your project manager thinks that uh, you don't have work he may come and ask you to onboard all these things isn't it yeah okay yeah and then uh, the last one is a search for trains task it is under uh, trains trains feature sorry trains uh, backlog yeah. go and add a link new item task is this ui ui design save Hola, here it is showing. yeah uh, while creating task it is showing the uh, i mean it is not showing the efforts required it is showing remaining work so why is yes that? yes uh, remaining work is nothing but you know uh, on the first day let us say okay. you just okay. it is assigned to you okay i'll i'll explain it because we haven't okay. come to that actually okay. Okay. i just want to populate this quickly i mean i can do it offline but you may get you know some confusion so hardly takes uh, five minutes right that's right and then uh, I'm not feeling anything that's why. Okay. 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 And the last one is uh, another features basically landing page. Okay. The user profile which comes under landing page. That is a feature. So, so feature means you have to under uh, add under uh, epic basically. Open landing page epic. New item. And make it as a feature to uh, landing page epic and give this user profile okay. here i'm not giving anything it is under uh, the entire application basically online reservation system path okay. okay done let me add the last one login it is also under uh, the epic uh, landing page go and add a new item this is a feature not doing uh, not adding anything here as you see that's it so i have a very good uh, number of items here okay yeah uh, epics features product backlog items and even tasks tasks are the one uh, used by the developers to go and uh, do coding or db development or whatever you call under development right and this is where uh, your project manager track the effort basically okay 
project manager cannot track the effect at feature level or epic level he will track at the uh, task level basically because this is what developers are going to work on okay when they complete all these things uh, it means that uh, he is uh, completing a feature or epic etc right okay now let's quickly go and have a look at the uh, boards so under boards many of the things under uh, uh, online reservation system area path that's why you can see many things under online reservation system team basically if i go to db dev there is only trend management sorry this is okay it is filtered by features here in the kanban board make it a backlog items so db dev also you have four and you can also see how many tasks are there under uh, each uh, product backlog as well search for flights product backlog you have a uh, three tasks you can see three tasks i will show you how you control them as well ui dev okay uh, there are uh, no backlog items under ui dev okay uh, this is just uh, you know quickly i'm quickly showing okay this is just a raw format basically and sprints okay now we are coming to the sprints basically okay what it is saying now you have a product backlog item sorry you have product backlogs uh, uh, one product backlog for your uh, application uh, available now you cannot go and uh, develop uh, all the uh, requirements in one go right that's the waterfall model if you remember uh, I mean, if I, I don't think you worked in a waterfall model because you, your experience is uh, 10 years or 9 years, right? But if you're having more than 10 years experience, you might have worked in some waterfall model projects as well. Okay. In waterfall model, what happens? They will take all the requirements and uh, they develop all the requirements and then uh, release it for testing and uh, and it will go to the production. That means uh, it may take one year or it may take two years based on the uh, number of requirements and the complexity you have. But that was completely failed. What happens uh, in waterfall model? Uh, I mean, the product owner or the client might have given you requirements uh, today. And uh, you will take one year to develop it. After one year, those requirements uh, may valid or may not be valid. So that's why many of the times it will go for a rework heavily. Okay, sometimes projects completely will fail as well. That's the reason this Agile methodologies or Scrum methodologies came into picture. So the fund of Agile or Scrum methodologies is that, hey, don't wait for one or two years, or uh, don't wait to complete each and every requirement coding and uh, come for a testing or, uh, or go for a production. Go in an incremental fashion. Okay, so that uh, if, something, if something goes wrong, I will lose only part of my work. So, so I will not lose uh, the entire investment I made actually. So that's the funda. That's the reason in Scrum methodology, what happens? You deliver features uh, for every two weeks and you call the two weeks duration as a sprint actually, okay? And uh, who will do what, what requirements to be developed in that uh, sprints? Uh, everything will be decide, decided in the sprint planning exercise. So it will take one or two hours uh, in a sprint they will spend one or two hours and uh, do the sprint planning. What all will happen in sprint planning? Uh, first of all, you have a uh, uh, hundred requirements in your product backlog. I'm uh, based on the, you know, based on the uh, availability of the resources. You may think that, okay, I will take three requirements to deliver in this sprint, means uh, in this two weeks uh, period. And uh, they will take 10 requirements and uh, and also they plan who will who is going to work on uh, what requirement and uh, they will also decide how much time it takes to develop that uh, you know requirement i'm i'm using the you know term called requirement which is general okay basically they will go and assign tasks and uh, product backlog items to the people and mostly it is a task okay so all these things will happen in the sprint planning let us say uh, next monday uh, the sprint has to be started okay it is two weeks right they, it will start on 21 and it will end on uh, september 2nd on 21st morning uh, your entire team will sit together for one or two hours and uh, complete the sprint planning okay and your project manager or a program manager whoever it is they might already know how many sprints it will take uh, say so you may you may be delivering all the requirements in all 
four or five sprints or a six sprints or 10, 10 sprints, it doesn't matter, right? So, but uh, the important item is uh, sprint planning for your sprint one basically. So it happens. After that, uh, you will get a subset of requirements from the product backlog, right? You call it as a sprint backlog. The subset of requirements of the product backlog after sprint planning will become a sprint backlog. That's it. And after that, daily you will have the uh, uh, you know catch up calls with your project manager, right? Uh, so in this catch up calls, what your project manager or team will discuss? Hey, what I have done yesterday? What I'm going to today? Uh, and uh, are there any issues uh, from the yesterday's work? Those things will be discussed even in your uh, daily scrum calls. You call it as a daily scrum. It happens every day. Okay. Now let's do this uh, sprint planning and uh, 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 which will give you the sprint backlog. For that, first I need to, okay. Now <clears throat> uh, this is the requirement, right? I mean, this is the thing that is going to happen. Now, see, not everyone can go, go ahead and uh, do a, a configuration of sprints in Azure boards, not only in Azure boards, in any tool, not everyone can go ahead and do it. You need to be an administrator of uh, your project. Okay. It can be your project manager. It can be uh, your DevOps engineer. So here, mostly your project manager will not do it actually. He will go and say, hey, man, uh, go and uh, uh, configure the sprints. And uh, the sprint is a two weeks duration. It will start from Monday and it will start, uh, it will stop on the, I mean, it will end on this day. That's what he will tell you basically. Now you have to go and, uh, uh, you know, uh, start configuring uh, those uh, sprints in your Azure boards. Okay. And remember one more thing. Uh, if I let me open this Excel. When you start a project, not all the teams will start on day one, right? Let us say day one. Day and, and uh, day 14. What I mean to say, on the very first day, uh, you may have only uh, one or two teams, probably uh, your uh, management and then uh, architect, I mean, uh, your management contains your manager and architect as well, and then your uh, UI dev team, and then your API dev team, right? And probably on day 10, uh, your testing team may come, but obviously, uh, but ideally your testing team should also start here basically, ideally. But uh, forget about it, they will start, they may uh, start a little late. And in uh, day 14 means it is a sprint too. As I told you, sprint is a four weeks, uh, a two weeks duration mostly, okay. Let us say this is a sprint one. I will, you will understand why I am talking about it. And then, uh, Sprint 2. In Sprint 2, probably your middleware team also will join. Okay. Now, your project manager will give you like this. Now you have to go and configure it. Okay. Uh, sprint 1, all these teams uh, will be part of Sprint 1, but a middleware team will join from the Sprint 2 itself. So like that, uh, he will give you the requirements to for configuring it basically. Now, how do you how do you do it? So irrespective of what you see here, uh, it is saying you know, hey, you did not configure uh, you know iteration path. Iteration is nothing but sprint path for this uh, team basically. Okay, online reservation system. Okay, sorry, uh, DBDEV system. You can see. How do you configure it? Go to project settings in the bottom left corner, and then go to uh, we already defined teams here. Now go to team configuration. Okay. Uh, as you know, this is all about, uh, I mean, uh, 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 working days, etc. Okay. Now go to, you already seen the areas. Okay. He's already part of some area. All these teams are part of some areas. And that's the reason you are seeing the, uh, you know, re related requirements uh, on their common course. Now go ahead and uh, do a iteration. Okay, now I am doing the, I am configuring the sprint. Uh, I am saying, hey, DB Dev team will uh, start working from sprint one. Okay, so <clears throat> go ahead and uh, select 
So by default, your Azure boards create uh, six sprints basically. So online reservation system is my project name. Under that, it is six sprints. If you want more than six sprints, you can go ahead and add the sprints basically. From here itself, you can do that. Now I say this team will start from sprint one itself. Okay. Let me set the dates itself. I mean, uh, uh, whenever you are creating, uh, uh, assigning this one, you will get a chance to, I mean, define the dates as well. Start date and date for your sprint. Edit and say, I will say this is a two weeks, right? It will start from 20 and it will end on September 1st. And this is under online reservation system space. It is your project. That's it. Save and close. Okay. And uh, I mean, default iteration, backlog iteration. See, uh, this is your area pass basically. You, you are under uh, this online reservation system. You don't need to change any one of these things. You simply said that this guy will start from sprint one, not this team basically, not the guy. Okay. Now let me open this in another tab actually, so that uh, you'll quickly see. Okay. Go to boards. Click on it. Uh, go to board. Uh, the, sorry, the sprints, right? <coughs> see earlier uh, you are getting. Uh, for a DB dev, it, it was you are getting some issue, right? Uh, saying that uh, a iteration path uh, was not configured. Now that issue you don't see it here. You can see the sprint one. You can see here, okay? And you can add a new sprint from here as well, okay? Uh, sprint one uh, you can see, but there is nothing planned for this team. Means uh, nothing uh, is being assigned uh, for this team basically to work on. Okay, do the same thing for uh, other teams. Other teams are, you know, let us say, <coughs> okay, this is not done, that's why it is not showing. Let's go to other team. What is that team? Let me take the middleware team. I will say this middleware team will start from sprint two and go and define the sprint to start and uh, end dates. So you, you see, I mean, it automatically moved to October, you see, because my sprint one uh, uh, is closing at uh, October one, right? That's why uh, the intelligence is working here. It's uh, the moment I open sprint two, it is uh, showing me October 4th, actually, okay? <clears throat> so, oh, sorry, I selected this uh, end date. Let me take, uh, okay and then it will yeah four and 15th automatically selected okay what it is saying your changes could not be said what is this you must space oh sorry i selected that one that's why okay that's okay now i defined uh, middleware uh, team uh, iteration as well now let's me go and uh, see ui dev team i will say he will also start with the uh, sprint one Okay, 920. You see, it automatically picked. And the last one is online reservation system. I guess this guy we already. Uh, <clears throat> so, whoever, I mean, uh, common guys uh, like architects or project managers, basically they will be part of your online reservation system uh, team. Basically, they cut across all the teams. Okay, and I just specified, you know, yesterday we specified these things 10 uh, two sprints basically. That's it, just leave it as it is, okay? If you want to remove, you can simply remove uh, from here. You have those options, okay? Now, if I go to my teams, let's quickly, uh, you know, refresh it. You see all the in sprint one, you can see middleware team, uh, it is empty and then uh, ui dev team it is empty nothing is planned okay now let's go and do the you now you configure the sprints basically for all your teams okay it clearly shows how many work days are there in each sprint okay this is all self-explanatory okay now let's go and plan go to backlogs or boards uh, i will say i will go to the backlog okay uh, boards uh, let's go by 
okay so now you will say this search for flights uh, have to be assigned to someone but as of now uh, i did not configure i did not give access to i mean i means as a devops engineer or a project manager uh, did not give access to anyone else to this azure boards i mean only the administrator is having access to this that's the reason it is showing on the my email id here okay you can go on search you will not get anything right nothing no idea so first uh, task for a devops engineer is that uh before you plan the sprint right you need to give access to the defined the team members whoever is there you need to go and add them to the to this project basically so how do you give access uh, to the users or your uh, teams so for that you need to start with the organization because your uh, project is in organization right means your client first you need to go and uh, uh, go to your organization settings click on that organization you are in the organization and in the bottom you can see organization settings go and click this and here uh, you see uh, you can see all of information about your, your organ this organization like uh, your planet 21 has got only one project as of now you can see all the details okay let's go to the users uh, can you give me your uh, uh, you know azure devops uh, accounts here can you ping me i will give you access to you can you put this in the chat uh, lohit kiran sah I got the Kiran one. So I'm going to add Kiran to my organization and to my project. Okay. So let's go ahead and add a user. And uh, so add a Kiran here. And you have a different types of access levels here: basic, stakeholder, and Visual Studio subscriber. Basically, Visual Studio subscriber means you have some license of Visual Studio, and uh, you will have a uh, permissions this is one of the access level basically okay basic level and visual studio sub, sub, almost same i will give you one uh, matrix where it will show all the differences basically but for the time being let me give basic access uh, uh, to my organization and to the selected projects here okay online reservation system selected and it will send uh, okay after that you remember when i'm adding the team right uh, I was giving some uh, permissions as well, you know, uh, contributors, etc. Uh, reader means it, he will have only read only access. Contributor means he can contribute, he can add, uh, edit, etc. Administrator means he can even delete, modify, even work items as well. Let me put as a project contributor. Basic means he basically uh, can do anything other than uh, removing the users or deleting the users or you know, removing the projects or creating the projects, etc. But he can contribute to all the items uh, or the features or functionalities within all these areas like boards, uh, you know, repos, uh, CI, CD pipelines, etc. Okay. Now say add. So this guy is added. Okay. Uh, he hasn't access. That's why he's showing last access. Let me take the other people as well. I will add uh, Sahil. Can you use it? Let's say and this guy project contributor. This guy is added, and then let's go and add. Uh, okay. Add an user. This is your work, DevOps engineer work. You okay. have to online reservation system, and he is a contributor. Okay. Now you basically 
uh, it's like you know you are working for a client first you have to get access to your client environment right similarly here first you have to get an entry into your organization that's why you are added, added at the organization level in that organization you have many projects but you only get access to this project that's how what i defined but now inside the project where i need to be part of do i need to be part of db dev team uh, do i need to be part of api dev team all those have to be again set basically okay for that you need to go to the project settings go to online reservation system okay go to project settings okay now you have go to the teams these are the teams right you can see now everyone every team is having only one user that is me who is admin basically open uh, db dev team add an user here so let me yeah lohit dagari okay you can see it's not showing it's not you know it is not populating what is another one is it taking time i am not uh, understanding giving me but it is uh, I can see this guy. I can see this guy. Okay. I think there is some latency issue. Uh, let me log out and log in. Sometimes, you know, the <laughs> it's not a troubleshooting manner, but I generally do it like this. If UI is not refreshing or something, this is my general style. Okay. Not sure why after selecting it, it has to be displayed here. Sorry, I'm not able to hear. Your voice is very low, Kiran. Is it fine now? Yeah, it is good now. Yes. Okay, just type the email ID completely and try to click see if we can get a save button. <laughs> no, it, it, it generally I selected it right it has to come basically yeah instead of selection yeah. I'm trying for searching the other I'll try to okay okay or do we have an option to copy from the previous group no no we can it will automatically identify even if I copy like this right it will identify okay. no no whatever I am doing yeah it's not working uh, not working it's not selecting basically see even my id is it's i mean it's not the function i think there is something wrong basically okay uh, because i'm able to see you, you can see the contact as well right i mean when i search for it it is showing me the contact information as well that means uh, it is added here basically at organization Hmm. Let me go to my org level. 
go to users. Oh, oh, sorry. Guys, can you go and uh, log in once? Let me see. You will have an email. Can you try that? You might have received an email from me. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. Can you go and uh, check your emails? You, you might have received an email. Uh, you've been invited to join this uh, you know, project, etc. Okay, while he does that, let's go and uh, start this basically. Okay, open another tab. Go to online reservation system. Now, since uh, you uh, done that exercise in a sprint configuration and you're done with area pass, let's go to your, uh, uh, I mean, let's go to work items where I can directly, you know, uh, select this rather than switching between different users. Okay. Let's go for a uh, search for flights product backlog item. Okay. And uh, I will assign this to myself. Okay. During the project uh, sprint planning, right? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, the entire team will decide who will work on what basically. It's a discussion. So I will say I will assign to this myself. Okay. Search for flights. Okay. Uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, that's all you can do. And then iteration, let's put it in a sprint one. Okay. So I might be a team lead. Uh, I might be a developer as well, right? It doesn't matter. Those will not be uh, displayed here. And uh, search for flights, right? Now what we did for uh, search for flights. Now you have to assign uh, the, re uh, the relevant tasks uh, of the search for flights to your developer. Okay, so for search for flights, you have these uh, three different uh, tasks. Okay, uh, let's start from the API development search for flights. Okay, I'm a developer and I'm a lead as well. I will assign this to myself. Now, people will decide, hey, this is the API development for search for flights functionality. How many hours it will it is required to develop this? Uh, debate will happen basically. Let us say. Uh, all the team members decided that it will take a 24 hours, uh, I mean, three days to develop it. And uh, if, he, if he is a developer, I mean, uh, he may uh, mention this activity as a development. If he is an architect or a lead, he may mention it as a design or whatever it is. You can select the category, okay, development. And is it a block requirement, etc.? You can say actually, no. That's it. That's how uh, your remaining work. Uh, 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 why people call it as remaining work? Because if, after every passing day, people have to come and update this uh, work actually. Let us say today it is 24 hours. Tomorrow, uh, you are supposed to make it as a 16 hours remaining work. Means you need to update this value to 16 hours. I mean, uh, the developer, whoever is working on it. That's the reason it is always shows as a remaining work. This is the label name. Now say save. Okay. Planning of uh, one task is completed and then uh, search for flights api development and then db development <clears throat> and uh, this also i'll take it because i don't have any user for the time being okay put it in the iteration as a sprint one okay and then remain over as a let us say uh, uh, 16 hours and then activity as a you can put it as a design whatever it is okay save and then I have another one under this uh, UI design for flights. Take my name, put it under uh, iteration one. So this is all happens in your sprint planning. Okay, make it as a 60 hours and put it under uh, development. Okay, and all these things will be uh, entered by your uh, Scrum masters or project managers, these details, description, etc. Okay. That's it. So this is how you do a planning for uh, each and every uh, uh, requirement that is supposed to be completed in Sprint One. Okay, and uh, you are say, I mean, uh, your uh, efforts will be entered, your names will be entered, etc. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, look at the Sprint basically. 
go to the sprints this is where you see uh, this you call it as a task board that is the reason you see the tasks here and you see this is the sprint one task board everyone can see it and you have some other configurations etc and it is showing uh, the parent as well you see under search for flights uh, but it is not part of your task board you see this is the task board okay it is showing uh, uh, under to do i mean uh, these are yet to be started there are two tasks uh, you know uh, for this guy db dev team okay if i go to middleware there are no tasks so this is uh, this guy is starting from spring to you see it is clearly showing and if you take uh, ui dev team this guy also don't have any tasks defined take like online oh, reservations add or id yeah. okay you join you guys able to join okay let me see here let me refresh yes, this yeah. i see dev test okay okay let me go to, this is under my project settings right i am under project settings go to teams and then uh, uh, just let's add uh, somewhere else. Let us say UI dev team, and let's say DB. What is the ID? DB dev test. Okay, not the DB. Okay, DEB test. Why it is not? Uh, let me close this. You know, surprising. It is not, uh, you know, refreshing the, you know, uh, users. Uh, hello. Uh, can you go to the page again once? Uh, what to is the it? right side, to the right side, we have a drop down called direct members, right? Mm. Do we have something to do with this? No, no, there is nothing here. I mean, uh, because I'm just searching for uh, users, right? That's it. It is not displaying you here. Okay, let me let me check on. Oh, no, no, let me make a check. One more check. Yes. I have other organizations. Okay. I don't think this is a problem. Why I'm telling you why I'm doing this one. Basically, for every organization, right, you will get a five free users. You can add a five users as a free basically for every organization. Okay. That's the reason I am saying uh, this should not be a problem. But I am just checking uh, why I am not able to. So at least uh, this guy logged in. Okay. Okay. Settings, projects, project settings. Go to teams. So, uh, open this guy. Uh, guys, I will check this one. Why I am not able to select this one? Because I can see clearly uh, it is available here. Okay. Let me type it and uh, enter it. I never faced this issue. Okay. <clears throat> I'll figure it out. Uh, uh, let's not waste your time. But uh, we have to give access uh, like this basically. Now we are given at organization level, but I have to give it. Uh, Project level actually, okay. 
uh, let me try in different ways as well uh, formations okay uh, and uh, contributors you already see this guy you see uh, this guy you know dev test etc you already i can already see these guys okay these these guys are added uh, but why i am not able to add it to the dev team that is the thing. Mm. members add from here let me i'm just trying you know what are all the various ways I can do? It has to be instant, basically. But uh, these guys are here. You see. Okay, uh, team, I will check this one why I'm not able to add here. Uh, without this, you will not be able to access basically. Okay. Uh, uh, means what I mean to say if I go to my requirements, right? Let me see if I, I mean, if there is any problem in terms of the replication or whatever it is. Uh, flights, right? We are doing it for the flights. Uh, I'll, let me take other one, not the flights. I added my to myself. Okay, API development for trains. I'll take it, and then do search. Uh, it is coming here, but. Uh, I should be able to add to my team as well. Okay, okay let me add uh, some hours, you know, 12 hours. And the activity is, you know, uh, let us say uh, design only. And put it as part of uh, sprint one. Okay. That's it. And back to here and take uh, some other trains uh, one. Okay. DB development for trains. Let me try yours. NR, right? Yeah, you are also coming here. I need to add that to, you know, uh, activity development. I'm randomly not taking because it is just a exercise, right? Okay, and then uh, let me take for that trains, other one. And then, uh, let's say, sorry. I'm getting everyone here. Okay. Say 24. Okay. This is how you do the sprint planning. I mean, you means uh, your entire team will do the sprint planning. This, uh, this is a collective effort. Okay. Now, if you go and uh, look into the task boards of different people, I mean, different teams. Uh, see again, uh, this is driven by area path, right? You remember uh, your uh, combined boards or uh, task boards, everything is driven by area path. Your, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the area path of these tasks are, you know, DB dev. That's why you are able to see under uh, DB dev team because your DB dev team is mapped to the area path or DB dev area path. Okay. If I go to middleware, there is nothing because it is not started. And then uh, UI dev, uh, nothing is being assigned to UI team, right? That's why right. uh, I mean UI area path. Okay, if I want to go and let me go and add at least one item to this uh, area path actually. Work items. Basically, you start with uh, you know what is a uh, product backlog or you know feature basically. But you you track the work at the task level, so. Hotels is not done, right? Let me take the hotel. 
let me assign this entire thing to Kiran and put it under uh, sprint one. Change the area path to probably uh, UI guy, UI dev team. Okay. And now you go to the tasks of uh, hotels. I did. Did I not any task? Did I not add any tasks? Go back to work items. Hotels I added, right? I did not add hotels tasks here. Uh, I have it. Yeah. yeah, but probably uh, uh, I kept it as a middleware basically. Let me change it to uh, UI. Okay, sprint one. And uh, I'll give it to Kiran, right? Okay. And the remaining work for this uh, one is, uh, let us say, 16 hours and the activity is uh, design done okay similarly you will do it for uh, where is the other hotels it must be here okay and uh, make it as a kiran it, it has that you know caching basically change it to ui area path and put it under uh, sprint one and put it as another 24 hours probably keep it i'm just uh, randomly selecting design or development okay and then similarly do this uh, hotel right this is a uh, added this is unassigned let me take this and probably i'll put it as a dev test okay put it under uh, ui sprint one let's say 16 hours I'll put as some probably some deployment. I mean, just for you know, sake of uh, configuration. Okay. So uh, now you done the sprint planning for many of the tasks. Now you see for the UI dev team has got uh, three items because this UI dev team is mapped to the UI dev area path, and all these things are driven by area path. Okay. This is how. Uh, you can see. I mean, uh, some of see some of these things are unparented means uh, i think uh, something is missing means its parent is missing okay uh, op let me open this it will this is the advantage of you know your uh, visualization right go to this ui design open this the parent is here right search for hotels open this Oh, this is unassigned. Okay, that's the reason it is showing, you know, this one. Let me assign this to this one. Put it under UI dev team. Put it under sprint one. I close this. And uh, yeah, okay. Now you see, uh, earlier, you know, uh, the product backlog was not assigned but uh, only the tasks are assigned the childs are assigned but not the parent that's why it was giving issue got it i mean the advantages of this uh, you know uh, visualization of these task boards are you know common boards okay now it's good okay now you done this uh, you know what do you say sprint planning now you have a sprint backlog okay there now now it's the responsibility of your project manager to track uh, the progress of your you know uh, development right now on the first day everything will be under to do stage you see that to do right but uh, uh, from afternoon itself it ha everything has to be in, in progress because uh, the sprint is starting uh, today itself uh, just for example but the sprint is starting from uh, september 20 whenever it is starting they have to keep uh, you know these in the in progress state you have different states to do in progress and done it is also showing how many hours are uh, pending to be uh, completed okay so how i mean uh, he has to do for first you know uh, if you want to move something right first they have to move this you know uh, from new state to this is in the boards product backlog boards basically okay first they have to, someone has to say approved it then it will go to the approved okay and after that uh, I mean, you can simply drag and drop like this, 
or you can open and change the state here okay this is how people have to you know move the or change the states of your work items like your product backlogs similarly for your tasks as well if i go to my tasks okay now you see this is in the under approved state okay now uh, let us say someone is starting its uh, you know uh, uh, development for the ui okay kiran now he will move this to in progress okay this is how people will go and update the statuses of their work in azure devops on a daily basis okay but in earlier days people used to do it on the our whiteboards basically people go and write it or people go and add the sticky notes like this who is working but uh, since that is a manual work people do it only for the first one or two days after that everyone will forget because it's very tough to go and write and uh, move on the actual whiteboards and the rooms right now this is easy every day uh, in the during during the scrum meetings okay your daily scrum meetings right uh, people can go and update their statuses and you know uh, people have to go and update uh, the remaining work every day as well okay so this is how your uh, regular day to day life uh, will go on and now you see what you have done to enable these teams to come and use this azure boards you given access you given you configured sprints and uh, you uh, configured area paths etc <clears throat> now uh, the other uh, typical problem that you uh, i'll spend another 5 minutes and we can close it okay uh, the other typical problem that your project manager faces is uh, managing the uh, you know uh, project right so uh, let us say now we have uh, four members in this project okay four members are working on all these requirements okay it's a two weeks sprint right let us think that uh, uh, you are on uh, leave basically i mean let us say kiran is on leave uh, uh, on some day okay or uh, for two days but if he is a work, if he is off for two days, that means uh, whatever the work uh, he is having will be on hold, right? There should be some uh, backup uh, to cover Kiran, or uh, Kiran has to close that work uh, much in advance uh, before he leaves for the day. He has to go and you know work on all those uh, development work and close this remaining work as a uh, zero. That is one way. The other way, if you cannot do that one, your project manager has to assign some other person to this work. But you know, if it is a three, four people, it is okay, he can manage. But you know, your manager might be having multiple projects as well. So obviously, if he is handling, you know, 20 people, 30 people, he doesn't know or he cannot remember when a person will be on leave basically. And obviously, people will manage it in Excel sheet, but you know, it will not give you visual representation, right? Uh, if you are having some coloring, right, uh, red, green, etc., people will immediately understand uh, hey, there is something to be noted, kind of stuff. Okay. So, how do you uh, uh, make your, how do you enable your project manager to track the progress of uh, uh, project, man I mean, uh, uh, progress of your project uh, successfully? So, whenever someone is up or uh, when the available capacity is not meeting, the uh, uh, required hours to develop uh, your requirements, it has to be notified to your project manager. So that's where uh, you can configure capacity for your team. You means a DevOps engineer can go ahead and the capacity for the project team. Of course, your uh, inputs will come from your you know, uh, project manager. <clears throat> if I go to the capacity, okay, right now in the task board, right? Uh, now you see how people manage their work here okay and that here right on the top right corner you can see an options uh, you can uh, you can group by people you can group by backlog items now i grouped by backlog items you see i this is all these tasks are grouped by backlog items okay in this backlog item group these many tasks are there like that that is the first section the second section is uh, you have a work details and planning and off if I click on work details, <coughs> it is showing me one section. It is showing me all about details are all about my work in my project. So what it is saying, hey, uh, the total work uh, that is available to be completed in this sprint is 56 hours of work. Okay. 
and it is also giving me uh, the categorization of this work under uh, out of 56 hours 16 hours are for the deployment 40 hours are for the design that's how it is showing and this is for the team ui dev team okay not for other teams because whatever you are seeing here is is related to particular team basically now it is also showing me uh, so the work is uh, showing in different uh, representation one at the total level one by activity the other one by by person who is working on uh, what i mean dev test is uh, having 16 hours of work and uh, kiran is having 40 hours of work if you submit everything is uh, summing up to 56 hours and similarly if you go to db dev team uh, so first of all you need to on this work uh, work details okay now here you see <coughs> uh, this team is uh, having total hours of 92 hours work and there are 28 hours under design category 64 hours under development category and uh, if you go by person dev test is having 12 hours of work uh, Lohit is having uh, 24 hours Kiran is having 24 hours Puna is having 32 hours now the problem is that uh, the tracking right I mean this is how you can see let us say Kiran is of uh, see uh, Kiran is uh, dev test right uh, uh, Sahul is off for let us say the entire week since your project manager you know uh, is having some 20 30 people in that thing he may not notice you know and he will he will not even remember whether this guy is on leave or not and what happens by the end of the sprint means on october 1st or, uh, or september 30th uh, people will your the testing team will come and complain hey that this requirement is not completed this is not available for testing that's where he gets realized oh man this guy is on leave and that's why this is not completed but uh, how do you ensure that all those things are reflected here? Now there is no visual representation showing, you know, green, red, or you know, yellow kind of stuff basically for the easy tracking. Nobody will come and read like this, right? Everybody needs some representation. So that's where you can help your project manager saying that, hey, you have a option called capacity. We can go and define uh, the roles of your uh, team members. And you can also define or track uh, uh, the leaves as well here and it will uh, so it will help you in tracking your uh, you know uh, work uh, uh, progress basically that's how you can tell him so how do you do so i can uh, so these are all the you know uh, activity type that you see in the task right so i will say puna work on basically design eight hours the complete eight hours so he will work on the design basically and similarly, you can go and add, let us say, uh, dev test. Add user. And I'll say this guy, dev test basically uh, work on uh, deployment eight hours per day. Save it. And then add uh, NR Kiran. I will say Kiran work on design four hours per day okay and another four hours he basically spent time on the development this is how we can define basically okay now you defined it now uh, uh, sahul is going on leave for the entire uh, sprint then days off right you can go and update it so he will he is off for 20 from 20th and uh, till uh, uh, first how many days you see all 10 days are off okay i can show now whatever is the work is assigned to sahul is on uh, threat actually now if i come back to task board after defining this capacity planning you see everything is now big, uh, converted to visual representation team so the entire, if you take the overall work of the team, this is in green because uh, the total capacity of the team is uh, uh, 160 hours, uh, but only 92 hours are defined. And the design is not at a problem, okay? And development is at risk. Though you have team members, but uh, it looks like, you know, your team members do not have a development experience. That's the reason uh, it is showing the red. And uh, where is this guy? Yeah, you see this guy, you know, 
dev, dev test, right? He is completely off. That's why it is not showing anything. Kiran is basically work. Uh, his total available capacity is 80 hours because he is not on leave, but he is assigned only 24 hours. Okay. And Purna is having available capacity 80 hours, but he is assigned only 32 hours. That's why it is showing green and uh, it is not complete, uh, complete because it is having, still he is having capacity to work on. Okay, now if I have to address this one, okay, whatever is being worked upon by now dev test, right? Uh, dev test here, this task, right? Go ahead and, and reassign this to available person let us say i will assign this to myself and uh, click on this let me refresh it is it not it is reflected right why it is showing still uh, low hit low hit uh, is available it is still showing me red why it is showing me red? Why it is not showing anything here for Lohit? Okay, for Lohit we did not define uh, here. That's the reason it is not showing. Let me go ahead and add Lohit. It has to show green or red. Okay, and I'd say Lohit uh, he will work on development eight hours per day. Okay, now go to the task board. You see because uh, some of the development activities are uh, attached to logit but logit is not configured under the capacity area that's the reason uh, uh, it was showing gray here and uh, it was showing uh, you know uh, red so this is how you can help the uh, you can configure the capacity for your team members to help your project manager basically now he can he he, j he doesn't need to read each and everything right he, all he sees is a uh, green or red actually Make sense? Yes. yes. So hope that is clear to you as a DevOps engineer, how you will help the team and uh, how your project manager will take care of, uh, will make use of all these different features to make his life easier uh, to track the progress basically. Okay guys, I mean, uh, that's it for today. Uh, on Monday, uh, we will get into some other uh, advanced concepts, okay, and uh, we can close the Azure boards mostly. Guys, I'll go by the story, not by feature, I mean, not by capability, basically. I'll tell the story and I'll show it so that uh, you will better remember it and practice it. And you can clear the interviews easily, basically, because nobody will come and ask you, hey, how do you configure capacity? Because everybody knows, go to the capacity menu and uh, configure it but uh, the questions will not be like that right questions will be you know what's advantage i mean how do you track uh, how do you enable your project manager to track his uh, team's progress uh, in azure words questions will be like that now you know the story you can answer it okay thank you guys thanks